Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Philadelphia Eagles have lost back-to-back game against NFL elites. Are they still an NFL elite? Also, Monday Night Football was not for the faint of heart. And Zion Williamson's weight is once again a topic of discussion. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're locked on sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. The Philadelphia Eagles were, were riding high. They had the best record in the NFL. And they've taken it on the chin the last two weeks. The latest, a drubbing at the hands of their rival Cowboys in the NFC East. But their schedule softens quite a bit coming down the stretch here. Still have a good chance to be the number one seed in the NFC. The sky is not falling, except maybe in Philadelphia, because we know what Eagles fans are like and the expectations are high. Gino Camilleri from Locked On Eagles, who joins me now. This was supposed to be a Super Bowl team. They were last year. And so when you look like this for a couple game stretch, it's going to lead to a lot of questions. What's the biggest one you want answers to right now? How do you get back in the race for the number one contender bid? It felt like there were three teams that were fighting for this belt, right? And you took on two of them and you got put on the mat a couple of times. And now you're going to go back down in weight class and you're going to figure out who you are. You have a matchup against Seattle and then you have to hopefully decide your own fate and go and get the one seed. The good thing is it's all about how you play in the playoffs, but the way that they looked in the last two games, it really made you look at this team and say, yeah, maybe they aren't as good as they have performed. And those weaknesses that we have seen all season long finally caught up to them. The good thing about it is they have good personnel. Hopefully their coaching staff can figure it out because if not, you're going to get the same exact result that you got against Dallas yesterday. You're going to get the same result against San Francisco. If you get out coached, you don't play good fundamental football by taking care of the ball and you just can't put together a game plan that is different from the week before to where all Dallas had to do was play the exact same game San Francisco did. And it seems like they did because the Eagles, they're just going to play into your hand when it comes to the defense. They're going to give you space. They're going to fail the tackle. Big plays are going to open up. And when it comes to their offense, nothing is coming easy for them right now. They don't even score on offense against the Dallas defense, which they've had success against earlier on, just a couple weeks ago in the season. Something is broken hopefully they can fix it. You have four weeks before it matters, but all of these games are going to matter because if you have to go on the road and play in Jerry world, once again, they could potentially drop 40 on you. Like they almost did yesterday. And if it wasn't for a couple lucky breaks that went your way in that second half, they almost did drop that many points on you. And being this team, having those aspirations, you have to come back to earth a little bit and say, we have to get right or our aspirations are one and done in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, it, the the defense the last couple of weeks, 34 against the Bills, 42 against the 49ers, 33 against the Cowboys, but also the offense, as you mentioned, the last two weeks, just 32 points combined. Which of those two units are you more concerned about right now? It's hard to not say both. It, it really is hard <laughs> to not say both because – it, I know you laugh at it, Pete, but at the same time, they've shown that if one of the four units, when it comes to run offense, run defense, uh, pass offense, pass defense, sure. if one of those units performs, they're not going to win a game. If three of them perform, they can win some games. But right now, none of them are performing and they're winning no games and they're getting blown out. So you really have to fix everything. You have to take whatever you're doing defensively when it comes to meshing your secondary with your front, throw it out the window and start from scratch. And same thing on offense. When Mike McCarthy looks like Albert Einstein compared to your offensive scheme, you might have to go and do some internal searching to figure out if this is the best way forward. Because if you look at it and you're not running motion and you're not making it easy for guys like AJ and Devontae and Jalen Hurts isn't in the rhythm that he was in 2022 you're going to get performances like you saw yesterday where things continue to spiral, things continue to snowball, and you hit rock bottom. I haven't seen a performance as lifeless as we have seen the last two weeks since maybe the 2021 season when this team was 2-5 and five and they lost to the Raiders. 
But with Nick Sirianni, it comes down to him. You're going to learn a lot about who he is as a coach. Can he do what he did two years ago when he got this team righted and got them into the playoffs? Or are we going to find out that maybe Shane Steichen really was the brains behind the operation and Jonathan Gannon, as much as we might not like him, maybe keeping him around would have been the move if he wanted to stay in Philadelphia. They have some serious problems to where your special teams unit is the only unit that's operating and you're not going to win a playoff yet any game with just one of three units performing. They have a lot of question marks, and if they don't answer them soon, this offense can be, or this offseason could be a real nightmare, rather. Stay up to date all year on the Philadelphia Eagles by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Eagles on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports Today your first listen. Coming up, the New York Giants stunned the Green Bay Packers on a game-winning field goal. But first, the Tennessee Titans had a major upset over the Miami Dolphins. We're into the second half of the NFL season, and now is the best time to turn your sports knowledge into cash with FanDuel America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, what are you waiting for? The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, teasers, and more. There's also a lot of weekly promos and boosts to give you plenty of opportunities to increase your payout. The Warriors and Suns face off tonight in what should be another high-octane game. The Suns are three-and-a-half-point favorites in this one. You can also combine bets for a bigger payout. Same-game parlays, a great way to enjoy watching sports. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and do the NFL season right. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. As nearly two touchdown underdogs, the Tennessee Titans went into Hard Rock Stadium and beat the Miami Dolphins. The Titans were trailing by 14 with under three minutes left before Will Levis led his team on two touchdown drives. Titans fans, what an incredible, miraculous comeback win for the Tennessee Titans, 28 to 27 over the Miami Dolphins. Will Levis is him. What an incredible performance, 300 yards and just absolute magic in the last three minutes of the game for Will Levis. Not only that, but we got great performances from some of the Titans' most important players like Harold Landry, who is 100% back. Baby, what an incredible performance from Harold Landry and some of the guys on defense. What an incredible comeback from the Titans. I mean, they absolutely imploded near the end of the game. In the middle of the fourth quarter, they implode. Eric Gerard drops a fumble, muffs a punt. Then Will Levis with a bad pitch, by the way, to Derrick Henry with the fumble set up two easy Dolphins touchdowns. Not only that, but the other Dolphins touchdown was on a pick six at the two-yard line that Levis basically, I mean, it's a miscommunication on, on a screenplay to Tajay Spears, but the Titans tried to hand this game to the Dolphins with their mistakes. This is a young team, this is a bad team, and they make a ton of mistakes, and they tried to hand the game over to the Dolphins, but Will Levis said no. Will Levis said nah. It ain't happening on my watch. North Carolina quarterback Drake May announced on Monday that he would skip his final season of college eligibility, skipping the upcoming bowl game for the Tower Hills and declaring for the 2024 NFL Draft. May is expected to be in the conversation for the first overall pick this April. Fear is becoming reality for the Los Angeles Chargers and quarterback Justin Herbert. Herbert will undergo surgery on his right index finger today and hasn't been officially ruled out for Thursday Night Football yet. But that also hasn't been confirmed that he'll be able to play again this season. Easton Stick will start for as long as Herbert is likely out. And the Detroit Pistons have now lost 20 straight games. Just six more losses in a row from an NBA record losing streak. The Pistons started the year 2-1 and one and have since lost for a quarter of the full season. Straight. Monday night was a reminder of just how crazy the NFL season can be. Jordan Love outplayed Patrick Mahomes a week ago, and then Tommy DeVito, AKA Tommy Cutlets, who still lives at home with his his mom and his brother, he outplays Jordan Love. 
You have the Miami Dolphins, who are the favorites to come out of the AFC to win the conference, to be the number one seed in the conference. They lose at home to a Titans team that are basically just trying to figure out if Will Levis is the guy and, and go from there. Not really a playoff team. This is just the week to week in the NFL. The Packers a week ago were the team no one wanted to play, but they hadn't had this kind of success before. They hadn't faced this kind of pressure before. Jordan Love comes out and plays like it's October again when the Packers couldn't win games, when they were turning the ball over, when their defense couldn't get crucial late stops as they did in this game. And just to add to all of the craziness, I mean, you had a situation in, in the Packers-Giants game where they fumble and then fumble back, where you have Saquon Barkley on what could have been the game-clinching chunk run, loses the ball as he goes to the ground. Packers cornerback Carrington Valentine picks it up, returns it all the way deep into Giants territory, and the Packers end up getting the go-ahead touchdown with under two minutes left. But Tommy Cutlets leads his team down, and they get the win. Not unlike the Packers blowing a lead to the Giants last year. That game in London, by the way, the Giants wore their throwbacks for both of those games. This is the craziness that we love in the NFL, but it also makes the end of this season really hard to predict because you look around the league and you go, okay, the 49ers are great. The Cowboys are great. Anybody else? Anybody else? Right now, there's a lot of mid in the NFL, which means we're going to get weird situations like we had on Monday night. Coming up, Zion Williamson's performance during the NBA in-season tournament has people talking for all the wrong reasons. New Orleans Pelican star Zion Williamson has always been a topic of discussion for his weight, for his conditioning. The Pelicans got eliminated in the in-season tournament with a 133-89 loss to the Lakers when Zion had just 13 points, two rebounds, and three assists while playing lackadaisical defense. Let's shift to Zion Williamson because... He's gotten, and deservedly so, a lot of heat over the past couple of days for basically a no-show performance. You know, going back to the Sacramento Kings game, you know, he seemed a little bit off in that one, and they managed to get the victory. But then on the biggest stage against the Lakers in the in-season tournament semifinals in Vegas, he just didn't look like he had it at all. And it's led to a lot of things of he's out of shape, he doesn't try hard, all of that. Things have been written too about all of this. It's, it's interesting to see this all kind of happened right after a loss because he had been playing well going the previous couple of games. It kind of dominated some of those games too and been unstoppable. And I actually expect him to have a big game tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And maybe this is all by design to get that out of him. There's no denying that he looked bad in that game. There's no denying that he looked bad in that game. What I, and, I, and look, a lot of the criticism, most of the criticism is very valid and very deserved. You know, Zion needs to, decide who he wants to be. So as with the Pelicans deciding who you are as a team, what's your identity? How are you going to respond to this? That really is like double, triple, four, five times as much for Zion Williamson. Does he take the conditioning as seriously as he needs to? Does he take defense as seriously as he needs to? Is he going to just jog back on defense? Is he going to go 100% during games or is he going to only go 80 and can you do that on a nightly basis if you are going 100%? There are games when he goes 100%. There's no doubt about that. But on the biggest stage, you can't do what he did, which was look timid, no aggression, just not being himself. And it makes you wonder why. Did they party in Vegas the night before? Very could have. I don't know for sure. You know, are they taking this as seriously as you need to? When you're getting paid so much money, fans are going to expect you to actually try. And for that not to be happening at this point in his career is a little bit, it's not even a little bit, it's very, very frustrating. And I get why fans are upset. And, you know, you've heard me say this if you're an everyday or a longtime listener of the show. I would go down with the Zion ship before trading him. Zion doesn't arrive on the biggest stage. He's never played in a playoff game. The Pelicans, when they played the Suns in the playoffs two years ago, he wasn't available. When they played the Oklahoma City Thunder in the in, uh, not the in-season tournament, the play-in tournament game last season. He wasn't there. This is the biggest game with the most stakes that he's ever played in in the NBA, and he no-showed for whatever reason. That makes you wonder if you can build a team around him. That's one of those things that if I were running the front office, I'd be like, oh, man, 
we need to consider a trade or at least explore some options because that was so demoralizing and that worries me about his ability to show up in the biggest moments. You know, we had heard all off season about how he's doing the right things in the gym, getting the workouts in, you know, David Griffin had talked about how this was the first off season. He's really like committed himself in a way that he never has before that he spent more money on. He's brought more people around him, all of those things. And right now we're kind of questioning, is he, is he, that shouldn't be a question at this point. And it's up to Zion to decide himself if he wants to put these narratives to bed. One of the reasons this was brought up again as a topic, and this has been an issue for Zion Williamson his whole pro career, is Stephen A. Smith had plenty of thoughts over the last few days about Zion Williamson and his weight and his physical fitness. He took it too far into fat shaming, where it became a joke, where it became making fun of a player. That, that, that makes it personal. That makes it nasty. That's too far. But we can't go too far the other way and say, well, it's off limits to talk about the weight, to talk about his commitment. It is absolutely fair game to compare Zion Williams into LeBron James, which is what Stephen A. did, and say, look at this guy who is doing something at his age that no one else has ever done because of how well he takes care of his body. Imagine what Zion could do if he took care of his body the way LeBron takes care of his. Zion Williamson is out of shape. Zion Williamson is, he is fat. And he is not in the kind of shape you need to be to be a superstar player. We have to be able to recognize that. And guess what? The Pelicans recognize that. They've insisted that he do a better job with his conditioning in the offseason. And he hasn't, or at least hasn't sustained it into the regular season. He still looks like he's carrying way too much weight. There's no question that has impacted his ability to stay on the court. It's impacted his explosiveness. It's impacted his ability to be a factor on both sides of the court and him not taking that part of the game seriously. And it's obvious because it's not just the way that he looks. It manifests itself in a real way on the basketball court. And so there is a way to do it that does not make it mean spirited and nasty. But Zion Williamson does not take his body seriously. And his body is his career. And it would be a shame if he couldn't figure it out because the talent is incredible. If Zion took care of his body like LeBron James did, what would the league do? They would have no answers for him. And it's a shame that he hasn't been able to figure that part of it out. And finally, the Los Angeles Lakers have announced that they're going to raise a banner inside of the crypto arena for winning the in-season tournament. A champ a championship banner for winning the in-season tournament. What are we what are we doing here? That's like San Diego State hanging a banner for winning the, the Continental Tire main event last month. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Coming up on the next Locked On Sports Today, who will emerge from a crowded NFL playoff field? So at least until tomorrow. Stay locked on sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.